Hi, I'm Jeremy, and if you just bought a TIG welder and you have no idea how to set it up, I'm going to show you how to get started real quick. Here is your basic TIG welder. This happens to be a Miller Synchrowave 200. Right here is your handle, which goes from AC, which is for welding aluminum, to DC, which is for welding steel and stainless steel. And then you have over here your stick welder setting, which, well, we're not going to do that today because we're TIG welding. So we're going to set this to AC because we're going to be welding some aluminum. Then I'm going to flip it on. Up here, you have some settings. Right here, you set your amperage. Um, if you're just starting off, you can set it to, you know, depending on what you're, what you're welding. The thicker the metal, the more amperage you want. This one obviously goes up to 200 because it's thinker wave 200. Um, I'm going to be welding some intercooler piping today, so I'm going to set it to 130 amps. It's probably way more than I need, but I like to control the amperage with my foot pedal. So that's where we'll get started. The next thing you need to know is your gas. You'll turn your gas on, like so. This is a straight up argon gas tank. I'm doing aluminum, so I use straight argon. If I was doing steel or stainless steel, I might switch to the CO2 argon mix. Um, although I'm pretty sure if you just use straight up argon, that's fine too. Uh, I'm not a professional welder by any means, but I can usually hack metal together. So in this case, we're going to be TIG welding. You can see if I push the, the um, foot pedal, the pressure goes down. And you can turn this knob right here to either increase the pressure or decrease the pressure. I usually set mine to right around 20 with it uh, actually running and that gives plenty of gas for the actual weld. All right, the next thing on the list is the tungsten. Uh, right now I'm using the green tipped. Um, I wanna say that this is a 16th of an inch tungsten. Um, right now you can see the, the tip of it is balled up. That's because I welded with it last night. Uh, typically you'd start off with a point on this. Uh, if yours is not a point, you wanna grind it to a point and once it's set to a point, then you can put it right inside the torch. I don't know if I can do this with one hand, but I'll give it a shot. All right. All right, the next thing you need to know is how much this tungsten should stick out of the torch. I stick it out, let's see, about that far. So I would guess it's probably an eighth to a quarter of an inch, maybe three sixteenths. So there you go. That's about how much I like to have mine sticking out. You could do a little bit more, but you might need some more gas. You could do a little bit less if you're, I guess, better than me or something. I'm not really sure. Um, but this is, this is where I like to be. The next thing to know is how to make a nice weld with aluminum. Um, and to do that, you need to have clean metal. Right now you can see there's all kinds of marker on this from where I marked it. Um, so I need to clean up this metal so it's absolutely spotless. If there's any dirt whatsoever on this, it's going to contaminate the weld and then your weld is gonna look like complete garbage. So what I like to do is I'll, I'll put some scratch marks in it. You can see there's a scratch mark right here. I, I put a couple of them all around the pipe and that way I can wipe off the marker and still know where it needs to line up. Um, I'm going to use some Scotch-Brite pads to clean up the metal, and then I'm going to wipe it down with acetone. Um, don't ever clean metal with brake clean and then weld it, because it creates a toxic gas that will kill you. So, um, always clean with something like acetone, or a Scotch-Brite pad, or, you know, something that will not kill you. Alright, let's try it. Alright, now you'll see I have the intercooler pipe pretty clean. I've cleaned the outside of the metal as well as the inside. That's one thing that a lot of people don't realize uh, if they're new to TIG welding or welding in general, is that you need to clean the back side of the metal or the inside of the pipe just as clean as the outside of the pipe. Because when you liquefy the metal, all the dirt that's on the back side is going to float up through the actual uh, weld and it's going to contaminate the weld. So you always want to clean the pipe on the inside and the outside really, really well. Uh, the one thing that I'm not doing here is uh, back purging the pipe. Um, in an ideal world, you wanna put your argon gas uh, filled um, or flowing into the pipe itself and then cap it on the other end. Um, and that makes sure that the backside of the weld 
does not get contaminated. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a setup for that right now, so and I'm just kind of hacking this together. So we're just gonna weld it as is. Um, I have a sixteenth uh, aluminum filler rod here, and that's what I'm gonna be doing this weld with. All right. So the way that you hold the torch is at about this angle. So I don't know if that's like maybe 35 degrees. This is about where you want it to be. And you, the way that I weld is I will weld up like this and go towards me. Um, I'll hold the torch like this. I don't know if this is how other people use it, but this is how I do it. And you'll basically, when you first push the foot pedal, you want to basically hit it down hard so that it actually starts pooling the metal. You'll, it'll, it'll take some practice to get a feel for it. Um, if you don't push it down hard enough, it's going to basically just blast a bunch of electricity all over the place and make a disaster. Um, and it'll get all covered in soot and it'll look disgusting. But if you, if you basically bury your foot down in the throttle and get the arc going, then you can back it off from there and you'll actually strike a good arc and then you can start melting the metal together. It's, it takes a ton of practice. I probably burned through like two full tanks teaching myself how the heck to do this. And as you can see, I'm still a backyard hack. I'm not like a professional welder or anything. Um, so yeah, that's how you get started. You can see I made a couple of tack welds on this. This one's a little sloppier. I'm embarrassed to show that one off. Um, but now I'm gonna go around, put a couple more tack welds, and then I'm gonna weld it up for real. All right, with all of my tack welds in place, now I'm going to get some more safety equipment on uh, because welding gives you a sunburn and it will burn the hell out of your hands. So I have some leather gloves and then I have some, some of these awesome arm covers. These are made by Tillman. I can't recommend these things enough. These are sweet. It's just basically like a sleeve that you put on your arm so that you don't burn the hell out of your arm and give yourself a sunburn. Um, welding will most definitely give you a sunburn. So you should always protect yourself as much as humanly possible. Um, yeah, so wear some leather gloves, wear your arm protection, and of course your face mask. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens next. All right, so now I have just welded up the whole seam. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention was when you're using the tungsten, or not the tungsten, but the aluminum filler rod, um, you should always wipe this down as well and make sure that the filler rod is nice and clean. Because if you accidentally lay it down on your workbench and your workbench has some oil on it or whatever, that's going to contaminate the weld as well. So, um, yeah, you can see, weld it all the way around. This is by no means professional, but you know what? It's totally functional. Uh, and it'll, it'll work great for an intercooler pipe. And yeah, hopefully that helps you out. So, enjoy. Happy welding.